Hello, I'm Jackie from IeltJackie.com. In this video, you'll learn how to answer matching information questions, sometimes called matching paragraph information. This type of question comes up regularly in the IELTS reading test, and unless you have a good strategy for answering it, you can easily lose a lot of time trying to find the answers. The step-by-step -step method I'm going to show you will give you the ability to find the answers quickly and be confident of a good score. Here's what we'll be covering. An explanation of this question type, the skills needed, key tips, the strategy and examples from real test papers. We'll start with an explanation of matching information questions. You'll be given a set of three to six statements and you have to match the information in each statement to matching information in a paragraph in the reading text. The type of information included in the statements can vary widely. For example, you could be asked to match facts, descriptions, opinions, predictions, definitions, explanations, reasons or challenges. Here's an example of instructions and statements taken from a past test paper. In this question, you're required to match three different types of information. Characteristics, challenges and difficulties. Matching information questions test your ability in several skill areas. You need to be able to skim read for general meaning, scan for specific information, read in detail to find the answers, and identify synonyms and paraphrasing. They're a real test of your paraphrasing skills, as the information will be expressed in different ways in the statements and in the text. Many synonyms will be used, and sentence structures often altered. Now for some tips with key information that you need to know. Tip 1. The answers will not come in the same order in the text as the order of the list of statements, so you're going to have to search around for them. Tip 2. Some paragraphs may not contain an answer. Tip 3. On the other hand, a paragraph could contain more than one answer. Tip 4. The answer will not necessarily be in the main idea of a paragraph, as in matching heading questions. In matching information questions, you'll be looking for specific information. Some students confuse these two types of questions, so be sure that you know which one you're answering. Tip 5. Do the other questions on this text first. Each text will have several types of questions attached to it. If you do the matching information question last, you'll already have a good understanding of the passage by the time you get to it. This will make it easier and quicker to complete. Tip 6. Expect lots of synonyms. Be particularly aware of information that can be represented in words and figures. The test setters love to try and catch you out with these. For example, percentages, degrees and dates and things like that. Tip 7. Usually, you'll find the matching information in a phrase or whole sentence, not in an individual word. Tip 8. Search for the easiest information to match first. This will normally be in a statement that contains keywords that are easy to find in the text, such as names, numbers, places and dates. This way, if time runs short and you're forced to move on before completing the question, you'll at least have picked up the easiest marks, rather than wasting a lot of time on a difficult question. And finally, tip 9. You can narrow down the match of any statement and paragraph by a process of elimination. For any specific statement, there will be paragraphs that are clearly not a match. Now we come to the strategy itself. I'll show you how to apply it to a real test question in a minute but first you need to understand it. Step 1 is to carefully read the instructions, then read the statements. Do this before you read the text. Take note of the main idea of each statement 
and think about possible synonyms that might be used in the text for key words. Next, skim read the text itself to get a general understanding of what it's about. Make a quick note beside each paragraph of the main idea in it. Just a couple of words will do. Although the main ideas may not be the information you need to match, doing this will make it quicker to find relevant paragraphs again. Now return to the list of statements. Read them again and decide which one you think will be the easiest to match. Since the answers won't come in the same order as the order of the list of statements, it doesn't matter which you do first. These criteria may help you to determine which statements might be the easiest ones to match. There are names, numbers, places and dates that will be easy to scan for. There are other key words that should be easy to spot in the text. Notes you made beside a paragraph of its main idea match information in one of the statements. I give a detailed explanation of this step of the strategy in the sample test. Once you've selected which statement you're going to start with, scan the text for key words. When you think you've identified the paragraph with matching information, read it in detail to check if you're right. Do expect synonyms and paraphrasing to be used. If you are right and can confirm the match, fill in the answer sheet and cross through the statement to eliminate it from further consideration. If you're wrong, continue scanning for the correct paragraph. Then just repeat this process until you've matched all the statements to paragraphs. Now for our practice question. This question is from a real past IELTS reading test paper. The next three slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space. However, I've created PDFs of the instructions, the statements and the text that you can download to make them easier to work on. You'll find the link to them in the notes below this video. Here's the text. Don't read it yet. We need to do some work on the statements first. But we'll come back to look at parts of the text in detail in a minute. So this is how I'd answer the question, my step-by-step -step strategy. I start by carefully reading the instructions to be sure that I know what I have to do. I then read the six statements to get a general understanding of what they're about. Next, I skim read the text for general meaning and write down a few key words beside any paragraphs where it's easy to identify one or more key ideas. See the example on the slide. I now look at the statements again. There are none with names, numbers, places or dates that would be easy to scan for and get me off to a quick start. So I can't use this strategy with this particular question. Instead, I read through the statements again, looking for information that matches the ideas in any of the notes I've made beside the paragraphs or matching information that I remember reading in the text. I'm immediately drawn to the second statement, which is number 15, because I remember a paragraph about the choices people make regarding what car they buy and how they drive. I wrote people's choice, what car, stroke, how drive, beside the paragraph, and this is a close enough idea to driving habits in the statement for me to think that this could be the right paragraph for a match. Because of my notes, I'm able to find the paragraph again quickly, and I now read it in detail to see if the information really does match. I identify the following sentence as containing the information I need. But fuel consumption and exhaust emissions depend on which cars are preferred by customers and how they are driven. The information is a good match, so I fill in the answer, which is 15F. I cross through the statement and move on to another one. I decide to try and find a match for statement 17 next, which is the writer's prediction on future solutions. I choose this one because it's about the future, so I expect the matching information to come near the end of the text. It's a bit of a gamble, 
but one I think it's worth taking to save time. I can leave it and come back to it later if I can't find the answer quickly. I also remember that I wrote notes relating to solutions next to two of the paragraphs, that was G and H, so this is a strong clue as to where the answer might be. I read paragraphs G and H in more detail. Paragraph G starts, some argue, so it's about other people's opinions about possible future solutions. I skim read it to confirm that it doesn't change to talking about the writer's opinion part way through. It doesn't, so I move on to paragraph H. This begins, a more likely scenario. This is clearly expressing the writer's view or prediction about possible solutions. I quickly skim to check that it is the topic of the paragraph. It is, so the answer is 17H. I choose statement 18 to match next, the increasing use of motor vehicles. I select this one because of the word increasing. I guess that the text is likely to mention numbers or percentages to give information about the increase in the use of motor vehicles. This should be very easy to spot with a quick scan of the text. Going back to the text, my eyes are immediately drawn to the first paragraph, which contains lots of numbers. I also notice that I've noted the words more vehicles beside paragraph A, which could be a paraphrase of increasing use of motor vehicles. I start reading the paragraph in detail and find the information I need for the match in the very first sentence. The synonym, the number is rising, which is used instead of increasing, is another clue that the information matches. I don't waste time reading any further and mark the answer 18a. One of the challenges with matching information questions is that you need to search the whole text for the specific information you need. Don't waste more time than you have to in order to confirm the match of information. This will only waste time and isn't usually necessary. I now have three statements left to match. I've crossed out the ones I've already matched as I've gone along, so it's easy to see which ones are left to do. I read the three statements and decide which has a key word that will be easy to find in the text. I choose 16, the relative merits of cars and public transport because I believe it should be easy to spot types of public transport, which will lead me to the answer. I think of some specific types of transport to scan for. The most likely are bus and train. I spot bus in paragraph B, but a quick skim through of the text tells me that this section is not about public transport. I continue scanning. Paragraph E looks more hopeful. It contains several references to types of public transport. I read the statement again to be sure that I understand what it means. It mentions cars as well as public transport and even if I didn't know what relative merit means, I could probably guess that cars and public transport were being compared in some way. Reading paragraph E in detail, I find a sentence that contains the words cars as well as trains and buses, so I'm sure the answer will be here. It reads, Yet cars easily surpass trains and buses as a flexible and convenient mode of personal transport. The key word I need to understand in this sentence is surpass, which means to be better than. So cars and types of public transport are indeed being compared in this sentence. Again, if you didn't understand this word, you might still be able to guess the main idea of the sentence from the rest of the vocabulary. However, you can see how important it is to have a good knowledge of synonyms. I'm confident that I have the correct mats of information and mark the answer 16E. I choose statement 14 to match next. A comparison of past and present transportation methods. This one is easy to match, as there's only one paragraph that talks about past forms of transport, 
and I made a note of it when I first skimmed the text. The answer is thus 14C. There is now just one statement left to match, which is 19, the impact of the car on city development. I haven't written a note beside any of the paragraphs that relate to this statement, so I'll need to scan the whole text for the match. Although I can't be sure that it will be in one of the paragraphs I've not yet used for an answer, I feel that this is a good place to start. First, I think of possible synonyms of city and development, such as urban and improvement. Then I scan paragraphs B, D and G for these. Paragraph B contains the word city, but not information about development. Paragraph D, on the other hand, contains both cities and urban. I can't see the word development or immediately spot any obvious synonyms, so I read in more detail to see how the statement might have been paraphrased. I identify the second sentence as containing the information I'm looking for. It reads, Adaptation to the motor car has involved adding ring roads, one-way systems and parking lots. This clearly refers to situations where cars have influenced or impacted development in cities. The final statement match is therefore 19D. I hope you found this strategy helpful. If you follow it step by step and use any little clues you can find as to the correct statement and paragraph match, you have every reason to do well in this type of IELTS reading question. The most important thing to do is to practice. This is the only way to develop your skills and get quicker at answering matching information questions. You'll find another sample question with full instructions on how to answer it on my website ieltsjackie.com. I've put a link to it in the notes below this video. Use it to reinforce your understanding of the strategy or for your own practice. Thank you for watching and I look forward to helping you with another of the 12 types of reading questions soon. Bye for now.